Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, uh, Nuts for Art. It is um, January 4th, 2015. I am going to read Chapter 2 of Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution by Tamplin and Goffman. Chapter 2 uh, continued, the subtitle is How Did the Complacency Arise? First of all, there once existed a very great paucity of data concerning the radiation dose versus effect relationship between radiation and cancer or leuke leukemia induction in man. Steadily, however, during these past 20 years, parts of the story have come to light from a combination of several extremely important sources. A. Studies of survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki by the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission. B. Studies of patients treated with radiation for non-malignant diseases earlier in life and subsequently developing cancer or leukemia. C. Study of children who commonly received irradiation to the neck area in one of the unfortunate era of American medicine. Oh, gee whiz, that's interesting. Let's read that again. <laughs> they shot the kids up with radiation. Study of children who commonly received irradiation to the neck area in, in one unfortunate era of American medicine. D. Study of the occurrence of lung cancer in uranium miners in the United States. E. Study of cancer and leukemia in children whose mothers had received irradiation diagnostic during the pregnancy. F. Study of tuberculosis patients who had received extensive fluoroscopic radiation. As the early results started to come forth from the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission, it was noted that leukemia might be appearing more frequently in persons irradiated in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Attention became centered upon leukemia as a sort of special response to ionizing radiation and not much thought was given to other forms of cancer. From the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission studies and from wholly independent observations, it is now clear and we believe no one disputes the estimates that at least a total doses of 100 rads or more to adults, the leukemia risk may be expressed as follows. One to two cases of leukemia per million exposed persons per year where each of them had received one rad of total body exposure. This does not require one rad per year. Rather, we are talking about the above rate of disease occurrence with a total accumulated exposure of one rad. Hmm. Furthermore, this incidence of one to two cases per million people per year persists for many years. Over the latency period, once the latency period is over, ultimately declining somewhat, at least for chronic leukemia. It is a known fact from many observations that leukemia or cancer is not an immediate response to radiation. There is a period of years different in different forms of cancer before the clinical disease is manifest. The period is called the latency period. What happens during this latency period remains unknown. We simply know that such a period exists. An incident rate of one or two cases per million people per year sounds like a small number, especially when this number is viewed in isolation. Indeed, many have hastened to add that spontaneously, without any man-made radiation, leukemia occurs in a frequency of 60 cases per million per year, varying with age, which makes it a relatively rare disease. So one or two cases per year sounds small by itself, and sounds even smaller viewed against the spontaneous rate of 60 per million persons per year. And as a result, with the early atomic bomb survivor data only showing leukemia, a widespread complacency set in concerning long-term effects of ionizing radiation, a complacency extending to high circles. For, for two very major reasons, 
This error in thinking has turned out to be the mistake of the first order of magnitude. Let me read that sentence again. For two very major reasons, this error in thinking has turned out to be a mistake of the first order of magnitude. First, leukemia happens to show a shorter latency period than most other forms of cancer. Therefore, the reason it appeared early Therefore, the reason it appeared early to be the only malignancy in the Hiroshima and Nagasaki survivors was simply that not enough time had elapsed for the other forms of cancer to manifest themselves. Second, the proper way to look at the incident rate of 1 to 2 million persons per year from radiation and the 60 per million per year spontaneously is not in isolation from each other, but in relation to each other. Thus, viewed in this light, one rad of ionizing radiation increases leukemia incidence between 1.6 and 3.3 percent. Or we can state that the doubling the dose that we can state that doubling the dose leukemia, namely the amount of radiation which will double the spontaneous rate, is between 30 and 60 rads. Doubling a spontaneous rate of 60 cases per million per year means producing an additional 60 cases per million per year. What about other forms of cancer? It now becomes an issue of paramount importance to know whether other forms of cancer behave similarly in response to ionizing radiation. Are other forms of cancer describable by a fractional increase in the occurrence rate per rad? And if so, how do the fractions compare with those of leukemia? We need no longer speculate about such matters because hard, Incontrovertible data is available for human cancers induced by radiation. These data represent facts, not fiction. Oh, excuse me. These data represent facts, not opinion. Hmm. Estimates are available for several forms of cancer from worldwide data, United States data, and the studies by the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission of survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Let us consider a variety of form of human cancers. The extended study of the Japanese survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki provided clear evidence that excess cases of thyroid gland cancer, breast cancer, and lung cancer were occurring due to the radiation received, in addition to the leukemias which had already been recognized at an earlier time. From the important studies on 14,000 human beings who received therapeutic radiation for the arthritis-like disorder known as rheumatoid spondylitis, Court Brown and Dahl have discovered the subsequent occurrences of many forms of cancer in organs heavily exposed incidental to irradiation of the primary disease in the spine. And similar to the fate of the Japanese atomic bomb survivors, leukemia was the first form of cancer to appear in these patients. But beginning some 10 years after their irradiation, many other forms of cancers began to appear in abundance. It is now clear that in addition to leukemia, cancer has been caused by radiation in the following organs. The lung, the stomach, lymphatic and blood-forming organs, pancreas, larynx, bone, colon, plus a variety of additional cancers of miscellaneous origin. So I'm going to stop here. I'm not finished with this part of the chapter, but I'm going on. It's going to get into statistics tomorrow. It's going on 10 minutes. I thought I would stop. Um, I'll post this up in a little while, and then tomorrow night I'll read a little bit more. And um, it's very interesting because we never hear about the uh, studies that he did on the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We never think about them, the people in Japan. 
of having died of cancers 10, 15 years later. That was quietly buried. So uh, we have a lot of information to uncover. Hopefully we'll get some answers. Talk to you guys soon. Ciao.